What's the sketchiest situation you, or someone you know, have ever been a part of witnessed while using, selling or buying drugs? Okay I finally thought of one, it would end up being one of the worst trips of my life. I drove to Baltimore, about an hour away, to pick a friend, we will call her E, up from our dorm so that we could go visit another friend, whom I will refer to as J, in Salisbury. Acid flows through that campus like water and, having been dry in our area for a couple months, this was the beginning of his freshman year so she didn't have any connects in Salty Balty yet. We had become pretty psychedelically parched and of course we wanted some of it. Jay was dating this guy at the time who was just kind of, out there. He was super sweet but he really was a weirdo with no social filter. The thing about that, though, was that he had a bunch of hot bed o weirdo friends and he and I were so all about that. We played music, Jay and her weird BF had a band and Ian Damp, I had a band, for a few minutes and then Duda shows up with the blotters. After a careful cutting session on the kitchen table we were psyched to get the ballroom even, everybody doses, I am the last one. I go to put the paper on my tongue, it falls off my fingertip and lands on the white linoleum floor. Did I mention that the floor was crooked? Like literally inclined. Also it was a college dance house so the floor was filthy nasty. We looked around like a couple of crackheads but we couldn't find it. Jay's boyfriend, party time facilitator, offers to drive me to Duda's house to get another hit. Okay, on the ride there, alone with him. He proceeds to tell me all about these crazy drug dealers who have apparently once cut a bitch who tried to sell them fake acid or something. Somehow this digresses into a monologue about his and Jay's sex life, how he wears a cock ring and loves it and obviously this shit is starting to kick in for him and I am so oh, oh, not feeling it. Shit is way too real how far are we I am not on the same page get me out of this car. A million years of awkward conversation later, we get to do this, it's an RV parked in a trailer park. We go in and there is expensive DJ equipment and records stacked everywhere. Cool, with terrible graffiti, if you could call it that, spray painted all over the place. That's when I remember the cut a bit story from the car. Jay's boyfriend explains the situation, Duda laughs and goes into some back room. A few minutes go by but it feels like us because everyone is tripping except me at this point. Duda comes back with a huge fucking knife with a curved hooked serrated thicking good I only keep it blade. He has a crazy look in his eyes which are locked on mine. Oh my god he's gonna fucking cut a bitch and that bitch is me holy poop dick what am I gonna do? Meanwhile Jay's boyfriend is staring at his hands talking to Duda's roommate about Freemasons or some shit I mean no help at all. He says, hey, bitch, pause for dramatic effect, cock's head to the right, dart. You wanna fucking party? Stick out your tongue. A jolt of electric fear runs through me. The light refracts off the blade as he moves towards me and my life flashes before my eyes. That's when I notice the little piece of paper on the tip of the knife. Fear subsides, rationality returns, I stick out my tongue, he places blotter gently on the tip of my tongue. I keep it in my mouth for a while then swallow. The trip only got worse from there. We had to call the cops twice while we were tripping to report two separate assaults we witnessed and I got desperately and awkwardly hit on by a stupid guy who was taking hits of nitrous while leaning on his enormous tank stupid idea one, while standing up, terrible idea two, of course he fell and cracked his head on some shelving, he had a huge bump on his head and kept alternating between your real pretty can I kiss you and should I drain this bump? I think I'm gonna drain this bump in his fucked up nitrous voice in between more hits, dumb idea three, then Jay was so whacked out she drove in reverse 10 blocks home and said that driving fast in reverse while tripping felt like it was meant to be. When we were driving home the next day, as we crested the mountain and could see our valley glittering in the heat, we were so happy to be home we cried like little bitches. I thought about posting this in our risk credit but thought it would be more appropriate here. Let me know if I was wrong. Oh yeah don't be stupid remember the internet is a public place and use a throwaway if you must. Whoa, I didn't expect this to blow up like it did. Keep him coming, and for fuck's sake be safe out there. Edit, removed some identifying information. I grew up in the Midwest, and smoke was more often than not terrible. One time I had just purchased a QP brick. It was literally the worst things I had ever seen. Later I found a piece of bark in it, and bottle cap. The brick was pathetically compressed, like 2 inches by 4 inches by half an inch. No sooner had I picked it up at the local park hangout than a female cop named I and Tits showed up. She looked full on bull, but she only harassed guys, so that wasn't the case. I stuffed the very small QP down the front of my pants. She lined us up and patted us down, very illegal. No PC, female searching minor males, it was pretty much her feeling up our asses. Because of the poor quality search, 
and worse smoke she never noticed what was in the front of my pants, because of the quality issues mentioned in the paragraph above, I found the local coke dealers in what was a medium-sized crack apartment building had the best weed around, somehow I befriended one of the upper level guys there, I don't even recall how, he would sell me great weed, and make sure I made it in and out safely, all at wholesale prices, after spending a few weeks scoring there, I was known as cool, the crack dealers controlled the entire building, sort of like New Jack City, I asked where my guy was, and some people said the next room, followed by the next room, a few more times, a few more doors, eventually I opened a door and there were six dashette guys with bandanas over their faces cooking raw coke into crack, I assume, I never did coke, nor cared for it, every hand went to a waistband for what I assume was a gun, I had never seen any of these guys before, they looked like the most dangerous people I had ever met, Right then my guy walked out from the bathroom and said it's cool, he is the kid I was telling you about. I guess they all though it was hilarious a suburban kid would come to the crack den for weed. I got what I came for and left. I have no idea what would have happened if my guy found me five minutes later. Not a drug story, but entertaining long after the fact. One other time we were trying to score views while underage. The local college was the end of safe area. Beyond that it was not an area that I would feel comfortable being in after dark. We had one friend trying to get college kids to get a spear, and we were a little farther into no man's land than we should have been. The rest of us were waiting in the car in an alley. All of a sudden four cop cars roll up on us, as well as SWAT on foot, lights, yelling to show hands, and guns everywhere. The two girls start crying, and when the cops found out they blew the entire night sting operation on five high school kids trying to buy booze they laughed their asses off. They told us it wasn't safe to be there, and we shouldn't drink. Since we were going to drink anyway, we should do it in the safety of our own neighborhood. All in all, pretty cool cops about it. I was in a ghetto part of town about five years ago buying cigarettes in a gas station when I was approached by a guy asking if I wanted to buy some hydro. I of course did at the time a guy hopped in the back seat with me. My friend Chloe was driving and her BF was riding shotgun. We drove a couple blocks away to his house which was on a dead end street he went inside, came back out and got in the car. I asked to see it and he asked for the money, which was folded in my hand. I saw that it looked like a bag of grass clippings and said eels off get out of the car. He then started trying to pry the money money out of my hand and I started yelling to Chloe drive 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 but we were the dead end so she put it in reverse. And while clutching onto my money and his wrist with one hand, I wrapped his long lost chain around his neck and kept him at a distance and kept kicking him until he fell out of the car. We weren't going fast. When we flipped around on the street we looked back to see around 15 fucks around him and some holding their pants off running after us. Pretty intense situation. There are some drugs you just don't get in the hood. Weed is one of them. My wife and I were in Puerto Rico last year, and we got put in a very dangerous situation trying to buy a $20 off bot. We were told by a dude we met on the street that we could walk with him, it won't be more than a 10 minutes walk he said, into an area he described as not dangerous to grab it. We started walking with him and slowly got more frightened as the luxurious hotels gave way to barbed wire and graffiti covered boarded windows. As we got to the spot where he would have us wait, after suddenly warning us about the drug lords in the area, a street junkie pusher came up and started harassing us in Spanish. Our dude decided to go get it, leaving us there to deal with this fucked up motherfucker. He kept yelling at us and pulling little packages out of a little case he had on him with syringes, probably heroin, and trying to sell them to us. He was making a damn scene. While my wife is trying to tell him to GTFO, she speaks Spanish. A nice car pulled up and this gangster ass dude starts staring at us. Next thing we know he is asking us to get in the car. Every other word out of the junkie's mouth at this point was gringo and he was trying to tell this man in the car, who we now know is a cocaine kingpin, that we were trouble. After saying we did not want to get in the car, the drug boss wheeled out, leaving us yet again with this fucked up dude. He kept yelling in our face in horrible, broken Spanish till our guy came back with the herb. We were scared shitless, in the slums, thinking we were about to get murdered in the attempt to acquire herb. As the obnoxious guy continued to follow us, yelling at the top of his lungs the whole time. We had lost all trust for our hookup at this point for leading us into this mess. And he started taking a different and unfamiliar route back to the hotel with a junkie trailing us. Now carrying a big stick and swinging it around. We finally got out of there with our lives and our little sacks of herb. We found out later from our connect that the guy who was harassing us got the shit kicked out of him for causing so much trouble for the drug lord, who we were not threatening at all. Never have I been put in so much danger for a drug transaction, 
and I urge everyone to be extremely careful about what you risk for a bag of bot. Could have gone horribly wrong, but we were lucky saved by a drug killing pin, who knows. On LSD with three friends of mine, two who had never taken a psychedelic before, and myself and the other dude who have decent experience, one of the new guys had a panic attack, not unexpected, starts doing the usual I took too much acid stuff. After about 30 minutes, though, he started puking. This put me and the other experienced dude on edge a bit, since we'd never seen acid give someone physical side effects and the other three of us were fine. His panic attack lasted for about five hours, his puking for three hours. In the moment, it was a house of the people, all tripping hard, thinking this dude might be dying. Pretty terrifying. We found out later that he had been looking for a drink and chucked a bottle of bubble solution rolls eyes. I got busted in a multiple jurisdiction task force sting selling half pound to a guy who was obviously flipping up. Tons of cops, bulletproof vests, guns in my face, the whole nine yards. Ended up skating on the charges due to a technicality. Also, one time my roommate called the cops because your stupid drunk friend was having a panic attack. First words to the 911 operator where my friend has a heart condition and is having trouble breathing. Just been drinking heavily and may have been doing other drugs. Needless to say the cops rolled in with the assumption we were a crack smack house. We lived on that part of town, and every type of cop you could imagine was there several minutes before the ambulance. The roommate was kicked out and we were never charged with anything despite them finding lots of pot paraphernalia and my other roomies recently deconstructed grow up. Pretty sure I used up all my luck at the department. Thanks for watching. Please give a like if you enjoyed the video and hit subscribe if you want to see more. See you later.